Hi, my name is Jason Biddle, and you may remember me as the guy who once publicly declared his love for cockroaches. No? What about the time I made cicada scampi? Not ringing any bells. Maybe you saw my Phil Connors impression when I stayed up all night asking Groundhog Day partiers about marmot biology. I know. You know me as the guy that once sniffed a sloth turd. You know what? It really doesn't matter. All you need to know is that I am a guy who somehow gets to write about animals for a living. If it's hairy, scary, scaly, or extraordinary, I'm here for it. The steel's going to give it a bit of a, 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 a bizarre taste, but it, it t literally tastes like nothing. It'll taste like that term I've smell. <laughs> yeah. Almost buttery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And today, I'm here to talk to you about butts. By the way, this is the very first episode of something we're going to call Masterpiece Creatures, which is a play on Masterpiece Theater, and I hope we don't get sued. All right, so what's with the butts? Well, for starters, butts are funny. But they are also critical to the function of your human body. And would you believe me if I told you that butts are also the foundation of life on planet Earth? Whale butts fuel the whole ocean with their gargantuan crabs. And tapirs? Their butts actually replant rainforests by dropping seeds in areas disturbed by logging and fire. Parrotfish butts. Parrotfish butts are the best. They eat coral, and then they poop out crunched up, munched up coral bones, which then get washed ashore that turn into beautiful white sand beaches. These are the same places where you are rolling around and, you know, making your thirst traps for TikTok. Did we use that reference correctly? I'm being told no. Add it all up, and I'm serious when I say, butts make the world go round. And right now, we're living in the golden age of butt knowledge. In fact, if you hop on over to Twitter, you can find a whole bevy of scientists, artists, and butt aficionados talking about butts as we speak. Just fire up the hashtag InvertaButtWeek. And as someone who has also once invented a hashtag to talk about animal butts, these fine folks invited me to get in on the fun. But here's the thing. Of all the butts on this planet, there's probably one more well-known than any other. One butt that I just can't stop thinking about. One butt so dangerous, it can make you vomit from 15 feet away. One butt to rule them all, and in the darkness, blind them. I'm here at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History with Leslie Wilson, a senior project manager and we have a friend to introduce you to. His name is Pepper Jack. Hello, see my name is Pepper Jack and I am an American striped skunk, Mephitis Mephitis. And they've got a lot of spunk in them too. This is Pepper Jack, his brother is Gouda and they both call the Carnegie Museum of Natural History home. Yes, internet friends, I'm talking about the skunk which can actually cause its victims to suffer temporary loss of vision with a direct hit to the eyeballs. Now, you may think you know about skunks, but I'm going to guess that you think that they discharge a cloud of gas like you've seen in the cartoons. In truth, they have two scent glands hidden inside of their butt, each of which has been weaponized by evolution. The glands are surrounded by sphincters that can rapidly squeeze down and squirt out liquid, kind of like a sassy grapefruit at breakfast. The skunk stink cannons are literally chemical weapons. What comes out is a weird sulfur alcohol compound guaranteed to make your eyes water and your tonsils bleed. And this arrangement allows these tiny, rather harmless critters to avoid getting eaten by a whole host of fearsome predators. Things like bears, mountain lions, bobcats, lynx, foxes. All of them will usually avoid tangling with an itty bitty skunk unless they're sick, starving, or maybe just too inexperienced to know better. The first thing they'll do is stomp their feet. They've got really strong little feet and they will stomp them and look as big as they can to hide and get away from a predator. If that stomping doesn't do the trick, then the next step is a handstand. Back feet and tail go up in the air and that just is priming the machine for the next step if it's needed. So if all of those things don't scare away a predator, then our skunk friend sprays. And believe it or not, they are very accurate and they can spray quite a ways. This is a powerful kind of magic, but perhaps the most interesting part about it, it is not unique. In fact, some weasels and their cousins can also repel predators using stink glands in their butts. So can otters, so can civets. Foxes do it, badgers do it. You also have ferret badgers and honey badgers. Actually, some badgers do it so hard, they're literally called stink badgers. In all, there are more than four dozen mammal species that produce anti-predator butt juices. And according to a study published by Theodore Stankiewicz, Paul Haverkamp, and Tim Caro in 2014, each of these noxious Nellies have a few things in common. For starters, they're all in the order Carnivora. Many are nocturnal. 
and all hail from solitary or at least non-social species. And honestly, this just makes sense because if you're a snack-sized snarf wandering around the dark by yourself, it's probably smart to pack some heat. Now, are you ready for the absolute coolest part? When the scientists took time to collect all of this information, they placed each of the stink butts into one of three bins. First, you have the animals that can simply produce a foul-smelling discharge when they get antsy in the pantsy. And that includes a whole bunch of critters with names that are just plain fun to say. We have the Ardwool, the Cackle Missile, the Olingo, and the Fossa. Red pandas are in this bin too, by the way, as are marbled polecats, ringtails, short-eared dogs, Indian civets, and a bunch of other stuff. In the second bin, we have animals that can not only produce malodorous secretions, but fire them through the air in sour-smelling streams. Here we have several species of genet, civets, hog badgers, and mongooses. Or is that mongoose? Finally, we come to bin three. And let me tell you, these are the creatures you really don't want to mess with. Not only can they produce pungency and launch it away from their bodies with ballistic butt nozzles, but bid three animals can aim. Here you will find the striped skunks, the hognose skunks, spotted skunks, hooded skunks. All of these are bona fide butt sharpshooters. So too are the greater grison, the African striped weasel, the zorilla, and the Saharan striped polecat. In all, we know of 14 animal species that can zero in and spray their putrid payloads into a predator's face and skunks account for fewer than half of them. Now I have a question for you. After seeing all these animals that are capable of shooting stink out of their butts, did you notice anything in common? That's right, black and white, stripes, spots. Why would all these animals sort of evolve down the same path to look very, very skunk-like? This is what scientists call aposematism. It's kind of like a $4 word for warning colors. And really it just means that at night, which a lot of these animals are nocturnal, we have to use black and white to tell predators that we're dangerous. Red, yellow, the, th the things that you would see during the day on ladybugs, poison dart frogs, they wouldn't show up at night, or at least for animals using their night vision. So these animals, grice and skunks, civets, polecats, black and white, that is the way that they tell their predators to stay away. Do you smell that? That is the gamey musk of newly acquired knowledge. So, do we like this? Should we do more of these? If so, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and I guess YouTube now, because I'm making this up as we go. I want to give a huge thank you to Leslie Wilson and the Carnegie Museum of Natural History here in Pittsburgh for their help with, well, whatever this is. The business end of a skunk. Business, yep. This is the most dangerous beauty you'll ever have. And to my man, Pepperjack, thanks for being such a good sport. Hope you enjoy the blueberries. I'd also like to thank Franz Anthony, Rosemary Mosco, Maureen Berg, Ainsley Sego, Natalie Metzger, and Maris Wicks for coming up with the idea of hashtag invertabuttweek. Go follow them on Twitter right now. That's all from me, folks. Watch this space for more silly and informative animal content. Until then, good night and good butt.